I'm in a street called Beaumont Street in Hamilton. Probably one of the prettiest streets I've seen in Australia. It's, it's very, very trendy. Uh, beautiful, old world charm, magnificent. Um, and it just keeps creeping on and on. I've never seen quite such a long commercial strip. So many different restaurants, even like a Dracula themed one, the whole bunch of stuff. So what I want to share with you here today is that you'll notice that I'm walking past the creative art space. This is pretty well the last of that commercial space. And when you look at that, we suddenly enter upon this house that has been here for quite some time. Beautifully built with the old um, tiles that were so expensive at the time. And what we're looking at here is the latest creation of the next generation rooming house. And with me again, of course, is Nigel and Michael. So welcome back, guys. Thanks, Kevin. And so here we have a home on a 12 metre frontage. Um, fairly tight, fairly tight space, but, but so close to the commercial activity, so close to the action, so to speak, that it's just a no-brainer. But they've had a lot of discussion with council on this one, and they've got to fit a whopping 11 car parks? Eight, 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 eight car parks on this one? Yes. And it's 14 or 16? 16. 16 tenancies. So um, it has its own interesting constraints, but they've come up with a very clever design and the council might be suggesting that it should be 15 metres, but the bottom line is, all that does is add another three metres of GFA, so it really is irrelevant as to that point. It's just one of those points that they can raise, and they've since overcome that as developers of this site. Now, this is the next generation, whereas the last one we saw with one car park only, this one requires eight on a block of land that's how big? 500. 500 square metres. So 500 square metres for 16 tenants? Well, the 18 tenants, we've got 16 rooms, two of them will be double rooms, mm. and uh, eight parking spaces. And it's uh, certainly been a challenge that the architect has uh, come up with a sensational uh, design. And where we are today is the council town planner has uh, supported our application. Tonight we go in front of the councillors, and that's the reason we have Kevin here to hopefully uh, swing the councillors to put the rubber stamp on the, um, the approval for this development. So uh, this is the one that's got all of the objections, about 30 odd, but interestingly enough, quite a few of them aren't even in the council electorate. Not in the council electorate, and then we find out that uh, some have been, I think the words fraudulently uh, put together. So it's going to be an interesting meeting tonight. I think what we're saying there is that just without doing too deep a dive, and we haven't done a deep dive, <coughs> but we've discovered that one of them has had their name put on the uh, complainant list to say they don't want it, yet they support it, and they never signed that complainant. So, so it's a bit odd when we find that with these people going around building up petitions, that sometimes they use, how would we say, creative endeavours to um, build up the list. And so we've got no idea how many of those complainants are real or imagined, but we're gonna bring that up tonight just to make sure that we can at least establish that we know that some of them are not. So stay tuned guys, because um, this is the one that I'm down here to look at in specifically to address the council tonight before we go live on our webinar later this evening to address all of our Property Revolution people who are in our closed Facebook session so that they can learn more about the financials of these things. Because keep in mind, as we've said before, the return on these is exceptionally good uh, and the greater good is that we get uh, tenants that normally couldn't find spaces. I mean, the amount of share rooms in Newcastle area is massive. And we're talking share rooms is um, one kitchen between a whole bunch of people and one bathroom between a whole bunch of people. Places where, where you don't have any privacy, any rights to your own space. So to have this dignified space at, at an affordable level is just unheard of. And, and when the guys were kind enough to give me the, the properties that were for rent, uh, just as an example, there's not one that would be available for anyone on a student loan. There wouldn't be one available for anyone on Newstart or any form of pension or any form of assistance from the government. Now those brief numbers only add up to just over 1 million potential tenants. So it is a big number. And so when you look at it, uh, if we haven't woken up to the fact that we're the most unaffordable nation in the English speaking world for 15 years in a row, then sooner or later, we need people like Michael and Nigel to continually fight the good fight to come up with something that at least matches that diversity of housing that we're screaming for at such a high level. So thanks for listening guys and we'll keep you in tune with what's happening as it happens. See ya.